live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. And welcome back to San Francisco. We continue our coverage here live on theCUBE. Tenth year, John, of covering VMworld. This is 2019's version. John Furrier, John Walls, glad to have you inside the Bosconi Center. We are joined now by uh, Varun Chabra, hey, who is the Vice President of Cloud Marketing at Dell EMC. Good to see you today. Thanks for having me. How's your week been so far? It's been amazing. I mean, how, how can you not get excited at all the innovation we're seeing this week? Well, we're going to hear about some big announcements too you guys have made. And Munya Manhazadeen, who is the Vice President of Product Marketing for Cloud Security and Workspace Solutions at VMware. Munya, good to see you. Good to see you again. Yeah, you, you by the way, you might be the busiest guy here. <laughs> Yesterday when you came into the set, uh, you, you were uh, coming in, uh, you just <laughs> spoken to 1,300 people in a standing room only session. You come in out, 500 folks. How many sessions have you done? The seven. Oh, seven. Wow. We usually don't count the one-on-one uh, -on -one with the analyst and uh, right. you know, with the customers and partners and press. And tomorrow I actually host uh, 140 press media analysts on campus in Palo Alto from Asia Pacific because they've flown all the way from Asia. So Just I'm 140? 140, yeah. That's a piece of cake. Yeah, hose them from 10 to 4. So, I mean, I... Not, and, 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 and you're always smiling, too. <laughs> knowing that, that this is a pretty wide audience to whom you've uh, been speaking, but just generally, what are you, if there's a common thread at all about the kinds of questions that people are coming to you with sure. or, or the concerns or maybe just the things they want to talk about being inspired by what they're hearing here at the show? Okay, now I'll cover it in two, kind of two aspects of it. One, obviously from analysts themselves, uh, you know, they are, they actually have been very complimentary about uh, the way we've taken our approach. Uh, I'm not sure if you kind of paid attention. Uh, in the last couple of years, we've been talking, especially on the cloud side, the narrative to be very much about use cases, you know, solving problems. You know, in the keynote we talked about, hey, migrate, modernize. It wasn't about, hey, I've got the, the next big product here with all these features and capabilities, you do this and that. So we've kind of shifted our narrative and it was very, you know, I was the, uh, the analysts, you know, across the board, you know, we've been saying, you know, appreciative of the fact that you're actually changing a narrative to be very compelling. And we've kind of reflected in, we have some, you know, things here like Cloud City, uh, where it's not a standard demo boot. It's a, it's a, customers walk in and they touch and feel and see, which we did it at Dell Technology World too. It's like, what's your business problem you're going through? <laughs> okay, these applications, I'm sitting, I don't know if I should be modernizing them or should I be migrating into Amazon or Azure? So, so you know, that narrative, the, the analysts are appreciative of, and that reflects into the customer conversations I've been having in the in our briefings, like one-on-one -on -one with customers. They're really kind of lost as to, hey, I've, I'm I'm working in this IT environment. Uh, there's a lot of you know pressure for me to you know modernize my applications or go adopt my cloud for strategy. Is where do I start? Where do I go? It's like you know there's big pressure. Mm -hmm. um, so they just want clarity. I think in, the, in everything we're gonna we were doing in our strategy that comes out. Obviously, the buzzword uh, for this VM world is Tanzu, <laughs> right? Um, and you know we Which was a, one of the, the product announcements. Uh, it was actually a branding kind of yeah branding announcement. To yeah. be honest, is branding, uh, right. yeah because uh, we're trying to bring together as you know, and Tanzu has landed um, in build, run, manage. Build as in you know how our intent acquired Pivotal, uh, already acquired Bitnami. How all our different acquisitions with different brand names are coming together to establish our build portfolio. Mm -hmm. Again, vSphere. <laughs> Everybody knows vSphere. Project Pacific, uh, PKS. All of those create a, a good runtime environment mm -hmm. and manage build it. Like how do you manage with assets from Wavefront? Again, more Bitnami, and you know so this multiple brands that are coming into this package of build run. So we had to create Tanzu to you know, put a forward statement together that yes, it's going to be seven, eight uh, different brands coming into this, but going forward it's Tanzu. <laughs> so, so that's first of all, great strategy. On Dell EMC side, on Dell Technologies, Michael Dell was in here, and I asked him, and I said, hey, you gotta, you've been number one in everything, you, he loves to talk about. I'm number one in servers again. You had to kind of get on HP a little bit, HPE. But those are piece parts now. So we look at the cloud game, yeah. it's bringing disparate yep. parts together, kind of, and making it coherent 
from a positioning standpoint and understandable and deployable. Yeah. So you guys are going down there, that's your cloud strategy. Take a minute to explain that. Yeah, absolutely, John. So, so what, what we've been doing, we announced this at Dell Technologies World this year, but uh, you know, in the cloud infrastructure space, we're, we're working very closely with VMware to tightly integrate our hardware solutions with their, their cloud software. And we think that by combining these two in a tightly integrated, joint engineer, jointly engineered solutions, uh, coupled with the services that you know, both VMware and Dell EMC bring to customers, we think we have, uh, we're giving customers a, a very consistent experience, both with their on-premises infrastructure, with public cloud, as well as with the edge cloud. And, and that's really what we're trying to do. That's what we've been building upon. And you know, I think the announcements this week, you know, just, uh, just hopefully show customers that the sky's the limit, whether it's not just your infrastructure management, also your app development, managing your apps, both traditional and, and uh, cloud native, it's all here. Farun, what's the big takeaway for you from your standpoint that you'd like people to know about what's going on uh, at Dell yeah. EMC for the VMware relation? What's the big top item? Yeah, there's, there's, there's just so much. <laughs> we could talk about it forever. Stack rank the top But if I, if top I would summarize three. it. We only have two hours. Okay, so. got it, all right, go ahead. I'll set the timer. Uh, I mean, but, the most important thing that people should, should know about it. Yeah. That's the big. You know, you know both Dell EMC and VMware, I think, are very, very customer-driven companies. Right? We respond to customer feedback and we try to respond to them very fast. That's been true throughout our respective lifetimes. Yep. And what we've done in the, so there, I think there's two broad areas of collaboration. One is in the cloud space, which is all about, you know, uh, making sure that the, the innovation that VMware is bringing to market, we are providing that in a tight, tightly integrated uh, infrastructure solution, right? So we announced uh, from a Dell EMC side, support for VMware PKS being deployed automatically on VxRail using VCF, right? So now customers can, you know, a lot of IT teams were telling us, hey, we have our developers, internal developers, banging slash knocking on the door, saying we need to build uh, cloud native applications, you need to give us an environment that we can use. And you know, if, if, our IT, if these IT teams don't turn around and give them something relatively quickly, well, guess what? You know, the developers will go somewhere else, right? The cloud, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, and then if you look at the, the Kubernetes environment today, if you really look, look at what the work that's required to set up a Kubernetes ready infrastructure, so a lot of scripting, a lot of manual you know, work, uh, command line interfaces, testing stuff, and what, what VMware PKS does, and you know, what Tanzu will do as well, is really makes it easy. Right? And what we've taken that with the magic of VMware Cloud Foundation, sitting on top of VxRail, to make it super easy for our customers to be able to deploy Kubernetes ready infrastructure, and then have it be ready for scale. Right? And then the important thing here also is, this is the same infrastructure, VxRail and VCF, that our customers are using for traditional applications as well, right? We're trying to reduce that complexity, give them on one platform. So there's cloud, you know, we had, we were doing the same integration, not just with our HCI platform, but also with our best to breed storage, server, networking with VCF. And then we're also making investments on, on data protection. Like, you know, it's so important to be able to manage your data in this multi-cloud world. You have applications sitting everywhere. Data, we all know that data is a crown jewel, so. Yeah, it's really, I think, validating from the VMware point of view how that works, right, is it's about applications, yes. it's about the infrastructure, yes. and it's about the operations. And it really kind of, together, uh, as we talk about Hanzu, PKS, is giving our customers the choice of, you pick uh, Kubernetes, you know, environments, application choice. Um, it took us actually, it didn't, we didn't arrive at it in that order. Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah. we did it in the order of infrastructure. Yes. So Cloud Foundation yes. is a critical piece of yeah. the joint engineering between VMware and uh, you know, Dell, uh, Dell Technologies. It's really, uh, from a VMware perspective, it took Cloud Foundation, and that's the, the stack that runs in every public cloud. Yeah. So, uh, you know, AWS, Azure, GCP, 4,000 plus, you know, um, cloud provider partners. But Cloud Foundation is a platform that was validated on Dell Tech hardware, um, yeah. and you know, that's the package. But now, as you see, we're lighting that same infrastructure up for traditional yep. and Moving Kubernetes applications. Exactly, I yeah. think the app side's important to point out because if you look at the VMware's heritage, you look at Dell's heritage, you had apps that ran on PCs, apps that ran on servers, client server, and if you look at the virtualization, that was an under the covers app and innovation that didn't require code changes. So yes. that's the DNA yes. that you yes. guys have. Now when you think about like cloud 2.0, which we've been riffing on that concept, yep. that's basically enterprise cloud. I mean, talk yeah. about a hybrid cloud. Yeah. Yeah. Applications yeah. are going to drive the value, and our premise is, is that um, they're going to be customer requirements that traditionally wouldn't have fit on the product marketing management 
feature list. Customers are going to define what oh, they sure. want, oh, yeah. they'll build it, yep. and then they'll dictate to the infrastructure to make it run. Yep. Absolutely. None of this, well we can't do that yet. Yep. It'll be, yes we can, it has to be enabled, it has to be dynamic. So this is a, a new cloud 2.0 feature. This changes the complete game on suppliers. Oh, co yeah. completely agree. Um, you know, to your point, because you, know, you bring it to, you know, back to virtualization, um, we've been going higher up the stack on, so, Day zero virtualization, infrastructure will virtualize. So the line of abstraction has just been climbing from hardware with virtualization next to like, you know, pat platform as a service, yeah. you know, and, and you kind of, we're working up our way down yeah. infrastructure. Now that base infrastructure platform looks like clouds, yeah. right? And then so they're coming down a little bit over here on the app side, you know, exactly. meet in the middle. Meet in the middle, That's right? That's Kubernetes, exactly. hello. Absolutely, so app and app middleware is shrinking down this yeah. way, infrastructure is you know, exactly. it's a cloud, and Kubernetes is right in the middle to say, well, oh, there's a bit of, you know, infrastructure as a code I can pull. Here's a bit of app APIs I can kind of draw yeah. from, and that's kind of a nice future middleware for their decade, yeah. I right? mean, I think applications are in charge, right? I mean, that's, oh, what's, yeah. that's, should that's be. the dynamic, and that's yeah. the way it should be, but it never was that way before. It's basically the infrastructure was your gating factor. Yep, the exactly. The network, exactly. so now cloud 2.0 is about network security data. Yes. DevOps, so true DevOps, yeah. Dev and Ops infrastructure as code. You know, I don't, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Um, no, uh, no the, the, the only point I wanted to add is the reason the emphasis on apps has changed, apps in the past used to be um, a business support system. Apps today is business. Yeah. That's yes. the change. I mean, it's, it's really your, your you're going to live or die based on the, the digital services you provide your customers. The other thing I was going to say about Cloud 2.0 is that it's also becoming increasingly clear when we talk to customers that uh, customers are realizing cloud is not a place, right? There was this kind of, cloud 1.0 was, okay, big honking data centers, hyperscalers. What we found now is that customers have gone through that uh, process of, of, and there's a lot more maturity in terms of understanding what is better running on premises, what is, what's better running in public cloud. And there's a place for both of them, and that, um, and that cloud is actually the automation, the service delivery, it's more an operation and, and a, uh, a way of being almost yeah. than a place. And what, you, what is it? Well, excuse me, okay. I mean, what does it do for you all then in terms of challenge, especially at your teams? Um, because you're talking about all this yeah. customization, you're allowing the application to yeah. almost drive, well, you know, yeah. you're changing places in terms of who's the, yeah. the power of the relationship. Yeah, 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 go for it. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, yeah how, what, what does that do for you all in terms of how you approach that, how you change your mindset, and how you change what you deliver? I, I think, John, it's, uh, the way I think about it is that uh, both Dell EMC and VMware, or any technology provider that's worth their salt, is in the business of building platforms, right? And platforms are essentially extensible, they're really, um, there's, they really provide a foundation that other people can innovate on top of, right? And that's how I think you handle the, the customization, right? If one thing I think we can all agree on is that IT has always taught us there's no one size fits all, right? right? So I think providing choice along every single dimension is super important for our customers. Yeah, I think the platform thing is a huge point, and I was going to ask, ask that question before uh, John got jumped in, because one of the things that you just brought up was the platform is, you guys have to build an enabling platform. Yes. One, as suppliers, yep. Yep. okay? The successful Cloud 2.0 companies are ones that are innovating in weird areas. Monitoring, for instance. Like, who would have thought that monitoring now, observability, would yeah. be such a massive lucrative sector for IPOs, yeah. M&A. Yeah. Why? Because it's data, it's, it's instrumentation. Yes. Again, this yeah. is operating system kind of thinking here. This is like yeah, networks. Exactly. So, so exactly. thinking like a platform, yes on the supplier side's one, the customer's got to start thinking like a platform yeah. because their stakeholders are their internal developers yes. or API shipping to suppliers. This is new this for is enterprises. New. This is new. This requires full hybrid capability. This requires data at the center of the value proposition. Yeah. I, that's, you know, again, uh, the biggest value is business and IT are coming together around the area of applications and data. Yeah. Uh, that's that's yep. a given because yep. the. Successful businesses are yeah. the ones who leverage those. Yes. <laughs> the yeah. guys who fail in the future are the ones who don't pay attention to how critical applications are to the business logic yeah. and how critical data is to be able to mine and get the behavioral analytics to get ahead of the company. Now the challenge in all this, what I'm learning and covering some of the public sector activity from the CIA contract and Jedi with Amazon to, uh, we had Raytheon here earlier as another customer example right. with another client, is that procurement and how they do business is not just a technical thing. Yes. Oh, yeah. There's like all this old legacy things, like how do you procure technology? Yeah. <laughs> Who you hire? Yeah. <laughs> do we hire developers? Yeah. We build our own stacks. So there's a lot of things going on. Yeah. In this. And, and you know, it's really interesting, on the, even on the procurement front, how 
uh, our customers experience with cloud has changed expectations, right? And that's really what we're doing with VMware Cloud and Dell EMC is what customers told us is, hey, I love the agility of the cloud, portal-based access, easy procurement. I love just being able to click a button and not have to navigate all this you know, complexity. Mm -hmm. yeah. I need that for my on-premises infrastructure and my edge infrastructure, and that's you know, an, an example of how all of these dynamics are really all converging. Well, if you can create an abstraction layer uh, and remove yeah. complexity and make things easy, simple, and affordable, that's a good business model. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> you, know, to, you know, one of our customers, without taking the name, right, the massive retailer, you know, they're spinning up um, the retail you know, outlets like crazy. They measure success in this was one truck roll. So they want to have the entire infrastructure come in to stand up one of the retail outlets in one truck roll when everything comes in, one button push that everything gets you know, provisioned and up to go. So well they this can, means yeah. they got to have full software instrumentation, automation, you got it. intelligence. This is kind of where Cloud 2.0 will lead us exactly. all. Exactly, and, and that's the expectation now that they go so fast in deploying this. It's one truck roll, hardware's there, switch it on from the cloud, it's stood up, and they're in operation 24 hours. Well guys, we're going to get you on our power panels and our Palo Alto studio on this topic, Cloud 2.0. It's going to be a very aggressive awesome. and controversial topic <laughs> because it's going to challenge the status quo. Oh, yeah. And that's really what this, we're talking about yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. That's in our DNA. And the, and the good news <laughs> is that, that's more time with John. <laughs> so as, as we, uh, before we, we uh, say so long, uh, we've talked about clients, we've talked about the folks you've met here, we talked about the presentation, all this thing, and all, what they're all getting out of it, what are you getting out of this? I mean, what are your takeaways as you head back to your respective uh, work quarters? You go first, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think for me, um, the, the biggest takeaway is just how incredibly vibrant the VMware user community is. I mean, it is unlike anything else I've seen before. And, and now with the things like Project Pacific, I, I just feel like it's, it's an opportunity for this community to be able to take the skills they have right now and actually go into this brave new world of containers with so much help versus having to do this all by yourself, which means it's going to be a, you know, if you think about how large this community is, just think about how much innovation this will spur in the container space and because of that in the application space and then because of that in businesses. I mean, I, this is a, it just feels like a tipping point mm -hmm. to me. To me? Sure. I got high fives from every tech geek, you know, when we came out, you know, I also run our technical advisory boards for the company. The, you know, these are the hardcore, you know, geeks who have followed and, you know, us to the, you know, these are the fans yeah, and they were like, you know, they always kind of like, if you walk out of them and you talk to them and they go, eh. And, <laughs> you know, how did it work? Because they, 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 they have they a high bar. Yeah. They have yeah. a very high bar. They cut through yeah. all your marketing messaging. They go right to the, hey, is there meat in this? and the high fives I got, the hugs <laughs> I got on this, is like, guys, you're nailing it. Um, that's enough to tell me that, hey, this was like yeah. 10 years ago. We're all doing <laughs> Yeah, right, right. It's kind of like, yeah, yeah that motivates. Like, oh, you're so busy, I'm still smiling because it's, the energy yeah. is, you well, know, I, I can't positive. give you a hug, I'll give you a high five, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right, right, right. <laughs> all right. Good work. All right. Gentlemen, thanks for the time. Always, he's still smiling, too. Still smiling. He's got a swing to his step. All right, yeah. good deal. Thanks for being all with right. us thanks, here. Guys. Thank you. Live thanks, on theCUBE, you're watching our coverage here in World 2019. We're in San Francisco, back with more right after this.